in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a selection of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. It is Tuesday, the 1st of October, 2024, 26th week in Ordinary Time. And today, we remember St. Teresa of Liger. I prefer the monotony of obscure sacrifice to all ecstasies. To pick up a pin for love can convert a soul. These are the words of St. Teresa of Liger, a Carmelite nun called the Little Flower, who lived a cloistered life of obscurity in the convent of Liger, France. And her preference for hidden sacrifice did indeed convert souls. Few saints of God are more popular than this young nun. Her autobiography, The Story of a Soul, is read and loved throughout the world. Teresa Martin entered the convent at the age of 15 and died in 1897 at the age of 24. Life in a Carmelite convent is indeed uneventful and consists mainly of prayer and hard domestic work. But Teresa possessed that holy insight that redeems the time, however dull that time may be. She saw in quiet suffering a redemptive suffering, suffering that was indeed her apostolate. Teresa said she came to the Carmel convent to save souls and pray for priests. And shortly before she died, she wrote, I want to spend my heaven doing good on earth. Teresa was canonized in 1925 and next year will be exactly 100 years since her canonization on October 19th, 1997, Pope John Paul II proclaimed her a doctor of the church, the third woman to be so recognized in light of her holiness and the influence of her teaching on spirituality in the church. This woman is said to be the patroness of missionaries. Despite not having gone out of the convent, she prayed for priests, she prayed for missionaries all over the world. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Felistas Tarwirei from Johannesburg, South Africa, celebrating her birthday today, takes for us the first reading. Brendan Polycarp Shio celebrating his birthday tomorrow, doing medicine in New Hampshire, United States of America, text for us the responsorial psalm, and proclaiming the gospel is Father Benedict Oyo, celebrating his birthday today from the Archdiocese of Nairobi, Kenya. Let us pray. O oh God, who open your kingdom to those who are humble and to little ones, lead us to follow trustingly in the little way of St. Teresa, so that through our intercession we may see your eternal glory revealed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. Why is light given to him? That is in misery. A reading from the book of Job, Job chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, 11 to 17, 20 to 23. Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. And Job said, Let the day perish when I was born, and the night which said, a man child is conceived. Why did I not die at birth? 
come forth from the womb and expire? Why did the knees receive me? Or why the breasts that I should suck? For then I should have lain down and been quiet. I should have slept, then I should have been at rest. With kings and counselors of the earth, who rebuild ruins for themselves. Or with princes who had gold, who filled their houses with silver. Or why was I not as a hidden untimely bed, as infants that never see the light, that the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary are at rest. Why is light given to him who is in misery, and life to the bitter in soul, who long for death, but it comes not, and dig for it more than for hidden treasures, who rejoice exceedingly and are glad when they find the grave? Why is light given to a man whose way is hidden, whom God has hedged in? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorio Psalm, taken from Psalm chapter 88, verse 2 to 3, verse 4 to 5a, verse 5 b to 6, verse 7 to 8. Response is taken from Psalm chapter 88, verse 3a. And the response is, Let my prayer come into your presence, O Lord. Let my prayer come into your presence, O Lord. O Lord and God of my salvation, I cry before you day and night. Let my prayer come into your presence. Incline your ear to my cry. Let my prayer come into your presence, O Lord. For my soul is filled with evils. My life is on the brink of the grave. I am reckoned as one in the tomb. Let my prayer come into your presence, O Lord. I am like a warrior without strength, like one roaming among the dead, like the slain lying in their graves, like those you remember no more, cut off as the year from your hand. Let my prayer come into your presence, O Lord. You have laid me in the depths of the pit, in regions that are dark and deep. Your anger weighs down upon me. I am drowned beneath your waves. Let my prayer come into your presence, O Lord. Gospel acclamation is taken from Mark chapter 10, verse 45. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Luke chapter 9. Verses from 51 to 56. When the days drew near for Jesus to be received up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But the people would not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to bid fire come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them, and they went on to another village. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I was introducing the book of Job yesterday, I made it clear that it's a kind of parable answering to the question, why do good people suffer? Why is there suffering at all in the world? 
And not only is it answering to the question of why good people suffer, it is also explaining to us that it is no more for good people to even have regrets in their lives. Today we are seeing those regrets being expressed by Job. Job cursed the day he was born. These are regrets. You know, you reach a point in your life when you start saying to yourself, why did I find myself here? How have I found myself in this situation? I should not have married that man. The man who has caused more trouble in my life than joy. I should not have brought into this world this child who is causing confusion in my life. I should not have married this woman. She has separated me from my own family. I don't know what to do. Regrets of a good man, regrets of a good woman. But you know what? At the end of the day, we are going to get the lessons from this book of Job. Everything that God makes us pass through has a lesson, not only for us, but for others as well. Aren't we learning from Job's story? Know that nothing is regrettable. Even what you think is the most miserable life you have, that life is helping somebody somewhere. That you have to understand. There is suffering, yes, but that suffering is there to remind us also of the joy of the little health we get in our lives. You want to appreciate what pain is you want to appreciate how healthy you are until you find yourself in a situation where you cannot even speak. You are able to walk. You are able to listen to this word. There are others who can't even listen to this word. So you are more privileged and you should thank God for that. And when you start a prayer of thanksgiving, you build immunity in yourself you start actually developing certain immunity in your system. And that's why every last day of the month for our good night message, we talk about gratitude. We thank God for everything that we go through. Look at Jesus in the gospel passage of today. He is heading towards Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is a place where he knows he's going to be killed. He is determined to take up that path of suffering despite being the righteous one of God is ready to suffer and you know to reach there he had to take some chapters <laughs> I call them some chapters instead of calling them some days because we are dealing with the gospel of Saint Luke this is chapter 9 and we are only going to talk about the sufferings of Jesus from chapter 22 so, you can imagine from chapter 9 up to chapter 22, he's on his way to Jerusalem. And a lot of things happen on the way. They reject him. The rejection that we face, even as priests, even as bishops, even as pope or pastors, we go through such rejection. And many of the men and women of God who don't understand that that is part of the package, even go to an extent of cursing those who are actually rejecting them. We see the disciples doing that. Lord, do you want us to bid fire come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. That's not what we are supposed to do. Why should we be wasting our time in reacting to situations when suffering is part and parcel of our lives? We have to understand that. And once we understand that, we won't even think that we are suffering. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Tuesday to you, and happy new month of October. Thanks be to God.